Okay, so in the last video we looked at the situation where the linear system of equations ax equal to b had no solution. And we came to the conclusion that the best way to try to solve it would be to take the projection of a b onto the column space of a and that would give us the solution, the best solution. But still kind of leaves the question of well first of all how do we do that projection and then even after we do the projection, how do we solve for x? So now we want to show some really um, very nice tools we can use to address both of those questions. And the first thing we're going to look at is what's called the best approximation theorem. And it's going to be the guarantee that in fact the projection is the best solution. So we're going to say that if we have some subspace of V and a vector in V, we're going to make the claim that for every other vector W in the subspace capital W, okay, the norm of U minus W is greater than or equal to the norm of U minus the projection of U onto W. Okay? And I have absolute value signs, but I really should put 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 norms. I'll I'll change that on the written notes. Okay. And I want to show you first of all, before we get into the proof, what this is actually saying. So uh, if we look at, say, in the context of regression, you know, we have the column space of A at some subspace here. And this is our, our B vector. That's what we're calling U here, right, in the statement. And we're going to project B on to the, to the column space. Okay, like so. And we're going to claim then that this projection is the closest vector in W to B. And you can actually see that visually. Suppose you considered some other vector. Suppose this black vector was W. You can see by the Pythagorean theorem. This is the this is going to be the norm. This is the difference in the, in the vectors. So the norm is, is going to be the distance between them. And you're going to see that it's definitely greater than the distance between B and its projection just by the Pythagorean theorem. This squared is equal to this squared plus this this squared. And this is going to be non-zero, right? So we're going to actually present the proof. We're going to show the mathematics of how this works out. But this is going to be the picture underlying the mathematics that we're going to develop here. So let's go ahead and prove it. So we're going to start off. We're going to say, OK, W is a subspace. Uh, U is any vector in V. And we want to show that for every other vector W in capital W, the norm of U minus W is always greater than the norm of U minus the projection of U onto W. So let's start off and let's look at the square. So let's just let U be any vector in V, W be any vector in the subspace W. Okay. And so I'm going to take the square of the norm and I'm going to add and subtract the projection of u onto w inside of there. And of course I know that the square of the norm is just the inner product of that vector with itself. Okay. And notice something important, which is that the projection of u minus w is in the column space of A. But notice that u minus the projection of u is orthogonal. Right? We showed that before. Ho hopefully you, you convinced yourself of this. And so now when I take this dot product, okay, so I'm going, I'm going to find that this cross term goes to zero, and basically I'm left with the sum of these two squares, which is definitely greater than the sum of one of those squares. And that proves the theorem. So the mathematics is just kind of imitating that picture that we drew. Okay, so that's that's all great. So now we know that we have in our we have in our grasp what the best solution should be, but how do we get this projection? How do we find the projection of B onto the column space of A? So here's where we use some very nice mathematics. And this is very clever. We make an observation that AX is equal to the projection of B onto the column space if and only if the difference of AX minus B is orthogonal to the column space of A. 
Okay. And so what we're what we're saying is that what we're saying is that and and what you have to do is you have to put in the projection of b in for ax. So the b minus the projection of b, okay, is always orthogonal to the space I'm I'm projecting on. That's the that's the clue. Okay? Now this is true if and only if the inner product of every column of A with AX minus B is equal to zero. Okay? And this is true if and only if the product of every row of A transpose with AX is equal AX minus B is equal to zero. Okay? And so this is true if and only if A transpose times the vector AX minus B is equal to a zero vector. Okay? So this is this is the clue. Okay? If you're orthogonal to the columns of A, you have to be orthogonal to all the rows of A transpose. So that inner product has to be um, that that I'm sorry, that multiplication has to give the zero vector. And so now we see that the, the equation we have to satisfy. And this is sometimes called the normal equations. So all we have to do is find the x that satisfies this. Okay? But we still have this problem, okay? Now we know how to get the projection of b onto the column space of a, but how do we solve for x? We still haven't really got a solution, and we don't know how to find it yet. Now, the real question of how to solve for x boils down to the basic question, is a transpose a invertible? Obviously, if it's invertible, we know how to solve for x. And the answer is yes, as long as the columns of A are linearly independent. Now notice in regression that's almost guaranteed. It's almost never the case. That's that's not true. Okay, so so um, this is a very, very weak condition. Now, in order to show that, we have to show that, okay, there's a little bit of background we need to develop here. Okay, we're gonna remember that from the last time, the kernel of A and the row space of A were orthogonal complements, right? We showed that before. Now notice something, that the row space of A is the column space of A transpose. Okay, so we're going to make a claim here that the kernel of A transpose and the column space of A are, are orthogonal subspaces or, or orthogonal complements, okay, to be a little more exact. How do I know that? Well, the column space of A is the row space of A transpose. And the row space of A transpose is the orthogonal complement of the kernel of A transpose. Therefore, the kernel of A transpose is the orthogonal complement of the column space of A. And that's a very important fact. So when we have orthogonal complements, they have a lot of properties. They have the properties that their dimensions have to add to the dimensions of the space. They also have a property that their intersection can only be the zero vector. And we're going to use that now to show that A transpose A is in fact invertible. So here's the proof. So let's suppose, um, and I won't prove it both ways. I'm, I, I, what I really want to prove is that if the columns of A are linearly independent, then A transpose A is invertible. So I'm only doing the backwards proof. So let's suppose that A transpose AX is equal to zero. Now notice something. AX is in the column space of A. Okay, but AX is also in the kernel of A transpose. Okay. And now these two things are orthogonal complements of each other. So the only vector that can be in both is the zero vector. So this means AX has to be equal to the zero vector. Now, I'm going to use the fact that the columns of A are linearly independent. Because you notice that AX, if I use that um, way of matrix multiplication where I express it as a linear combination of the columns, it's a linear combination of the columns of A, where the coefficients are the components of X. So if the columns of A are linearly independent, 
the only linear combination is when the coefficients are all zero which tells us that x has to be the zero vector and now what I've proven is that if a transpose a x is equal to zero then x has to be zero and we recall from one of our six equivalent conditions that this implies a transpose a is invertible so now we know how to solve this system the solution is trivial I'll say one thing before we end is and it's the following if you look at the final solution it looks like this I'm just gonna go back really quickly for a second the final solution looks like okay, raised to the inverse negative one power okay. and there is a special name for this matrix on the right hand side it's called the pseudo inverse of A so I just want to show you very very briefly just put this up real quick So this is the final solution for x. Okay. And this matrix right here is called the pseudo inverse of A. Okay. And if you're interested, you can read more about it. We're not going to have the opportunity to talk about it a great deal. But this red matrix is called the pseudo um, inverse of A. And it has some nice properties. And it turns out when we do um, regression uh, and, and working with any sort of overdetermined system we almost always use a pseudo inverse it's actually a very nice way of solving the system and I won't say anything more about it than that because it would take uh, too long for us to get into a, um, a, a, a decent discussion okay now we've covered all the different linear systems we understand uh, when we're going to have a certain number of solutions and we know what the structure of the solution set is like and how to find it. And now I want to move on and talk about um, specialized and uh, some advanced topics.